Hey, in this video, I show you exactly what to use this for. So check it out. Hey, Sage, what's this? <laughs> well, grab it, put it on the MFD. Let's take a look. All right. Co open it, yeah, there you go. Oh, wow. You wanna know what those are for? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so I think you've seen what we've been doing in the shop with these mm -hmm. TDS 13s. And I wanted to get this sustainer with everything in here because these are all dogs. And the, the, we could call these a dog stop. But what I want to do is you've been using uh, dogs in the shop. Mm -hmm. And I want to cover for people watching what exactly is a dog. Okay. All right, Sage, where are we starting? All right, let's talk about the holes. All right, let's do okay. it. Okay, you have two types of dog holes. You have round holes. Yep. And you have square holes. Oh. So this is how I grew up. I had uh, square holes. This is uh, part of my original bench my dad gave me. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, and uh, it was good. It worked well for my needs because what a do and I'll go into it in a minute what a, a dog is actually for. But I had difficult orientating. I could only hit it at a 90 here and here oh. because of the square of it. All right, it's hard to explain sometimes, but I prefer round holes. They just work better. This is kind of an old system. Okay, makes sense. Okay, now when you talk about dog holes, the traditional benches are three quarter and one inch holes. Okay. Now with the onslaught of all the Festool to North America, everybody kind of went nuts because the holes in the multifunction table are 20 millimeter. Oh. Okay. Uh, will three quarter fit in there? No, it drops through, even if it's spring loaded. And I'll go over different dogs in a few minutes. Okay. All right, Sage, so what is a dog for? Well, companionship. Hey. <laughs> no, but for real, a oh. bench dog. <laughs> okay, a bench dog, okay. okay. So, there's different heights, but let me show you. I'm gonna put it in here like this. Okay. And put it in here like this. It's a stop. So what does that do? It allows me to take a CAD scraper or a hand plane or a tool, and I can do it like this it impedes the forward momentum of the piece. Okay. That is the basics of what a dog does. So another thing about, and I'll talk about the multifunction table, uh, you have, it's perforated, you have all the dog holes. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing, as I mentioned about orientation, uh, I could take this, and if I wanna work at this angle, I could take it like this. I don't have to say, okay, move it here and go here because I only have, like on my traditional bench, I have three uh, rows of dog holes. That's why there's a lot of times I go to this table to do it. Also, because it's round or a round one, um, that works great as well. There's sometimes milled flats on dogs. Okay. So this works what? If I do forward, it impedes the forward moment mm -hmm. if I'm working in this. So grab a sander and put a sander on there. <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> it doesn't work really well. No. Okay, so that is why when you're sanding something, there's a couple <laughs> of options, okay? I can put my stops here, and I, it's basically a vise, you have to vise it. I would use this on my traditional bench, I put my dogs and use my tail vise with another set of dogs, but this is a great piece right here, it's called a, it's part of the clamping element set, and it's really nice, now it's locked in and now I can sand. <laughs> Safely. Yeah. Okay, so there's another option if you don't wanna use uh, the dogs and this piece here. Um, a lot of people buy um, drawer liners, you know how they're mm -hmm. non, um, non-slip? Yeah. There's actually uh, mats that you can put on a workbench where it doesn't slip. I really like these from UJK. You can put them in here like this. It's made out of that non-slipping material. And if you orient orientate it, fits properly, it fits right in the dog holes here 
because these dog holes, I'll show you in a little while, we chamfered them because my stop collar on all the TSO dogs fit right in there and self-center in that little chamfer, That's as awesome. well as the UJK system. You grab that ETS for me, okay. and you'll see. So when, to go back to talk a little bit more about dogs, when you, this is milled perfectly 20 millimeter, and this is, I forget where I got this one. I think it was a, a UJK. It is, that's called, that's collared. Okay. So when I put that in, that's how it stays. It doesn't fall through the hole. This is so fantastic because that could catch or not register properly. Mm -hmm. With this, these are flush mount. That's that little piece right there is actually the um, uh, collar. So when I put it in, you'll see it sits. And I'll just take my scraper and I can go right up against that dog because it fits or settles right in there and self centers on that chamfer. So we achieve that chamfer on there. If I want to chuck this up in the drill, mm -hmm. it's an insert tooling. These are reamers. You get them from UJK. We'll have something in the uh, description, a link to it. But here's one by hand, and it just puts that chamfer on there. You'll see it right here. Cool. So everything in that set we have fits right snug. That's awesome. It's perfect. It's flush. So we talked about this in a, an earlier video. Dog holes can be used for a variety of things. Um, it's just workbench 101, I call it, yeah. is understanding what dogs are. These are called uh, power locks. And we made a, uh, uh, for the bench grinder, we made a plate where these go in. And see how that's flush mount? So that's why I really like the chamfer. Mm -hmm. These are also mounted on these Bessie toggle clamps, whether in line. See the power lock system? Mm -hmm. I could take that, slip it right in there, and if I come up here, I just take the five millimeter hex, and from the top, I can lock this down, and I have the perfect hold down. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, Ted, what is this? Uh, Big D, we did a video on it already. <laughs> but, but good job. This is something that, and you already know this, I can't work without this now. Um, so, er, my original stop, I call them planing stops. Mm -hmm. um, I have it over here, sit tight, I'll bring it over here. Okay. It's adjustable, it's adjustable dogs here, mm -hmm. okay? These actually pop off, go right in, they're held. And I use this on my traditional bench, okay? I had one with three quarter holes before I bored it out with 20 millimeter. For me, I do a lot of hand planing or scraping. This is known as a planing stop. I got it up in Canada. Uh, what's nice is I originally got one of these, a TDS-10. Mm -hmm. And this is the original stop from TSO. And it worked great. But for me, the knobs were in the way. I used it occasionally, all right? Um, more so for clamping. But if I was hand planing, two things knobs are in the way okay okay it's still a great a great tool but when i was doing half inch see how it's right here so when i saw tso come out with these i just thought this was great it's a five millimeter hex right there and i can work half inch material once again i'm going to pull this up so you can see it i can go to my next once I've locked them in. Oh, nice. Because the holes on the MFT are 96 millimeters on center. And you see how this now sits flush because of those chamfers. And this is sweet, I'll tell you. I can't work without it. And what's nice, this, there's so many things I have found to utilize these. More so for clamping. And you'll see in a few minutes. Okay. Hey, Sedge, why, why is this one threaded? Okay, um, almost all of them, big D, on the bottom are threaded. Okay. See that? And that's a, a metric uh, eight thread uh, 1.25 pitch on there. So when I take that and say I wanted to set this up here like this, mm -hmm. I could take that and make it semi-permanent right here. 
just like this. I just take the knob, put it in here like this, and just lock it in. You can get those knobs at TSO. That's cool. I, I, I'm not a lock under knob guy. <laughs> okay, I think without the knob, but you'll see, feel how stout that is. It really makes it, it makes it a great registration point. Mm -hmm. All right, Sedge, so, so what's with the different heights? Okay, so Chris, get in here so you can see this. This is, this will probably be one of my favorite dogs, uh, chamfer dogs. It's because it's less than three quarter. Mm -hmm. It won't, I can lock something down now. Okay, it won't uh, get in the way. This is for, uh, so to answer your question, the higher ones, okay, that was definitely be in the way. But what if I have to use it to register multiple pieces? Okay, like this, see this? And there's a little bit on there. I could probably do three pieces there. Oh, nope, I would probably go to this one. Okay. And I see how I can register that. Nice. Okay, so maybe I can use that dog for a reference point for repeatability. Sounds good. All right, Sedge, what's next? <laughs> All right, remember how I make anything work and everything work? Every time. I couldn't. Uh, a couple years ago because my traditional workbench was bored at three quarter. So we did a video on this. We'll put a link in. It's on the Sedge Tool channel where I took a step drill and a 20 millimeter bit and I bored out all the holes on my traditional bench because one of, and I mentioned it, one of the things I like working with is this piece right here because it's a quick stop. Right, it's a quick lock on. So um, I used to use something like this. It's problematic for me because if I took a stop here and put this in, to get it there, I would have to go like this. And it was just, I was just tired of doing that. So that's why I bored it out at 20 millimeter. So if I needed to do something, I can lock it in just like that. Beautiful. It works fantastic and since then, so many things have come out with 20 millimeter boars or 20 millimeter dogs. So I'm so glad we did it. It's really changed how I work. And I'll tell you, and I said in this video uh, that I'll, that'll be in the description, don't waste your time. If you get frustrated and shot, change something. I waited too long. So one of the other things we did recently mm -hmm. is because we got these from TSO, the chamfer dogs, Okay, or more so <laughs> these TDS 13s. By the way, that's, and we all know in this shop, these live here and I'll show you why in a minute. I have found so many great uses for them. But I just took the, the chamfer reamer like this and I did that so everything flush mounts. All right, Sedge, so, so what are some other uses for these? Okay, so we use them for planing stops. They're mm -hmm. low profile. They fit in the chamfer, right? But I use them for clamping or holding holding and I'll show you some tips and tricks on this. Okay. I always have one mounted to my end vise, tail vise um, on the bench. It's a, a twin screw. I just took one of the handles off, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it out and drop it in the holes. They register right. I'm just going to tighten it a little. You see that? Now I could, if I was hand planing something, that impedes the what? Forward momentum. Mm -hmm. But I need to clamp this. so. I don't know if a lot of people know, a lot of people put things into a vise to hold it upright or whatever, but it actually makes a fantastic clamp. And you see, I just put my strop in there. You can put any board and see how it's locked down. Oh, wow. So that's one of the great things about a, a end vise like that to work. All right, Sedge, what's this set up? Okay, remember I told you this one lives here? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's always there as my what, my clamping part, right? But I just recently had to work a taller piece. So you see how that slides out? Mm -hmm. I could just take that, lock it down here, here, and then I could take this piece. See, I need to work this end grain or something. I move this out, I'll just move it out a tad more. Here, lock it in, lock it in, and then I can use my end vise, whoopsie, as a clamp to hold that. Oh wow. And you see that? Wow. Now I can work that end grain. So instead of running it like this, you can also run it like this in this orientation. So I keep finding endless uses for work holding or work clamping. Um, I'm gonna use these taller uh, chamfer dogs and put it in here. 
So say I gotta work a taller piece. I'm just gonna use this drawer box. I need this little extra uh, holding area here on my vise. I can lock it in like this and it's nice and stout. Good work, Clamp. All right, Sedge, what about this one here? We need to plane this smaller stock, but this is raised. How do we get around that? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so <laughs> great question. That, if I'm gonna scrape this, I'm gonna hit that and ruin the burr right mm -hmm. on there. So I'm gonna take this off. And you remember what these are? Mm -hmm. These are the anti-skid uh, dogs. Okay, they fit in. And they, once again, I love my new system here because those are chamfered, right? Mm -hmm. And look how low they are. So these, for me, are not only to place things on so it doesn't move. Mm -hmm. I like them because they're my new planing stop and they work like a dream when I'm scraping. So Big D, I think this is gonna live really handy and dandy in the Sedge Tool Shop. Oh yeah. For sure. So I guess this is a wrap and like we always wrap up the, these videos. <laughs> Be positive. Stay sharp. Wicked sharp. <laughs>